IKMFM inspirasi utama anda. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to the dear listeners of IKMFM. Welcome to the second episode of this season of Great Works of the Muslim World. I'm your host, Batrisha Afrina and joining me virtually in the studio today as usual, I have Dr. Mama Husni Mama Hamin. Fellow at the Center for Science and Environment Studies, Kias at Ikim. Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Patricia. And how are you, Doctor? Uh, good. Uh, it's good to see you again in this program. Yes, Doctor. Alhamdulillah. And uh, Doctor, going uh, for this episode last week, you talk about Kitab Al Ilm in Imam Al Ghazali's Iya Ulum Al Din, and in yes. that discussion, you covered about the content uh, of the Kitab, what motivated Imam Al Ghazali to write it, and you also discuss uh, how Imam Al Ghazali emphasized uh, the virtue of knowledge, uh, distinguishing between good knowledge and bad knowledge. And uh, dear listeners, uh, for this This week, Dr. Husni will be uh, will be sharing on Tajul Ibn Al Atayla uh, Al Iskandar's introduction to Tasawwuf. So, uh, for this week, it is another book different from last week, and this book is written by Ibn Atayla Al Iskandari. So, as an introduction uh, for this uh, sharing, Doctor, could you share with us in detail about the author? Yes, uh, thank you, Patricia, uh, for the question. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya'i wa mursalin. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Now, uh, the author of the Tajul Arus, uh, which uh, we are going to talk about today, uh, his full name is Tajuddin Abu Fadl Ahmad Ibn Muhammad uh, Ibn, uh, Ibn Abdul Karim Ibn Rahman Ibn Abdullah uh, Ibn Ahmad bin Isa Ibn Hussein Ibn Atta'illah Al-Juthami Al-Iskandari Al-Shadhili And uh, why he is named uh, Ibn Atta'illah is uh, because his name is, is long and then um, uh, usually they will uh, recognize the significant uh, people in the family name uh, and so he, he is making a claim that I mean, he's, he's not just making a claim, rather he's affirming uh, his lineage. And then uh, Ibn Atta'illah must have been uh, uh, the, quite the person uh, for him to associate and to, to affirm that he comes from such a noble lineage. So why is he named Al-Iskandari? Is because he was born in Alexandria, uh, in Iskandaria, uh, in Egypt. Uh, but he later moved to uh, Cairo. That's where he taught uh, in, in the madrasah there. Uh, he became uh, renowned and that's where he died later. And uh, he was a pupil of uh, Abu Abbas al-Mursi uh, who died in 1287. Uh, and al-Mursi himself was the protege of Abu Hassan al-Shadili uh, whom the Sufi order or Tariqah al-Shadili is uh, named after. And uh, Abdul Abbas al-Mursi himself, he uh, he was said to have uh, origins from uh, Spain. Uh, so he was a uh, he was uh, he has origins in Spain when the time when uh, Spain uh, well Granada Andalusia uh, was still uh, Muslim and then uh, and then uh, Ibn Atta'illah he, he studied under Abu Abbas uh, Al Mursi and uh, he was uh, a Maliki in Fiqh and in theology uh, he follows uh, Abu Hassan Al Shari. Uh, so he was an Ash'arite, and uh, he's, uh, he is reportedly the author of some 20 books. So he's a scholar uh, and uh, not just a, a jurist or a theologian. So uh, some of the books uh, that we, out of the 20 uh, books, some of the well-known uh, Kitabul Hikam. Uh, Hikam means, uh, Hikmah is the... Uh, Hikam is the plural of Hikmah, which is wisdom. Uh, and then uh, Kitab Al-Ta'if fi Manaqib Abil Abbas Al-Mursi wa Shaykhihi Abil Hassan. Uh, this is uh, on uh, talking about, uh, uh, well, if we translate it, uh, it means the subtle 
blessings in the saintly lives of Abdul Abbas Al-Mursi and his master Abdul Hassan, his teacher Abdul Hassan. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, the manakib is always talking about their lives, how uh, these uh, saintly people, they lead uh, good uh, lives, uh, lives according to the Sharia and they benefit uh, others. They have many students who uh, uh, acclaim their their uh, virtuous lives. And then uh, uh, Ibn Atta'illah also has uh, a book named Miftahul Falah wa Misbah al Anwah, a key to success and the lamp of spirits. And then uh, that's a quite uh, thick book, Kitabut uh, Tanwir fi Isqat al Tadbir, the book on the illumination, on abandoning self direction. This uh, book is quite uh, thick and it has been translated a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's a book on on theology, uh, Al Qasat Al Mujarrat fi Ma'rifat Al Ism Al Mufrat, uh, the pure goal concerning knowledge of the unique name. This is, uh, well, it's a, it's a kitab or it's a, a theological book and it's also a, a book on uh, interpreting, uh, interpretation. Well, in this book, uh, Ibn Atta'illah uh, makes a long, uh, well, it's just interpreting the name uh, Allah, uh, the single, mm -hmm. the, the unique name uh, Allah. And uh, it's a quite uh, an interesting uh, book. And then uh, we have uh, Tajul Arus Al-Hawi, Li Tahzib Al-Nufus, uh, which we are going to discuss today. Uh, well, the, the title can be translated into the bride's crown containing mm. the instruction to refine the self. And then uh, the last one that uh, that is well known is Unwan Tawfiq Fi Adab Tariq, the sign of success concerning the discipline of the path, meaning uh, on how to recognize people who have, who have undergone spiritual uh, training spiritual refinement and then uh, it's uh, the the training that they have had uh, is beginning to bear fruits as so you can see from their character from their from what they benefit uh, others with and um, uh, the success that, that they are reaping in this world and then uh, in the next one mm -hmm. so um so, so I said before that uh, Ibn Atayillah, he uh, moved from his birth uh, city in Alexandria to yes. Cairo to teach. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he remained there until he died uh, in 1309. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so he is widely known as uh, somebody, a Sufi sheikh, who um, systematized the Shazili uh, Sufi Tariqah, as we know uh, today, during that time when uh, when uh, Sufi Tariqah, uh, people had begun to look at Sufi Tariqah in a negative manner, uh, and and it's because of uh, some of the excesses that the Sufis themselves were uh, committing that you know they give uh, they give such such, such a bad impression upon. Uh, the teachings of Tasawuf itself, mm -hmm. uh, which earned the focus or ire of uh, people like uh, Sheikh Ibn uh, Taymiyyah, Sheikh Al Islam of that time, mm -hmm. who uh, begin to attack uh, some of these uh, excesses, and uh, and because of that, uh, uh, people like Ibn Atayilah. Uh, he confronted some of these uh, misunderstandings. Well. Um, some of these understandings from the people uh, to the people who actually committed these excesses, the people who attacked these excesses, and the people who uh, who turned away from Tasawuf because of uh, because of this because of the two, uh, mm -hmm. no uh, commoners uh, people who are common people who uh, who are. Uh, immediately turn away because they have uh, heard such bad things about uh, Tasawuf and, and the criticisms level uh, against it. So uh, 
because uh, after Ibn Atta'illah has passed away, I mean, uh, his written works, uh, he was, uh, they were widely uh, circulated, right by many. And because he successfully systematized the order, the teachings uh, of um, Imam Shadili, uh, so, so it led to the spread of the order to North Africa, Mm -hmm. uh, where uh, the founder, uh, Imam Shazili, uh, was uh, rejected before uh, people began to understand uh, Tasawuf better because of uh, Sheikh Ibn Ta'ila's works. And, uh, and, and uh, his work also uh, received uh, acclamation. They were, you know, widely approved. And um, as for uh, Kitabul Hikam, uh, many scholars have made commentaries uh, upon it. Some of them are really famous uh, masters of the Shazili order, uh, like Ibn Abbad Arundi, uh, Siddi Ahmad Zarruq, who later uh, produced uh, another book, uh, Kawait, uh, Kawait Tasawuf, I mean, uh, Methods of uh, Tasawuf, and Ahmad Ibn Ajiba. And in, in recent times also, it's been commented upon by uh, people who are not from the Shazili Tariqah order, uh, such as the late uh, Almarhum uh, Professor Dr. Sheikh uh, Sa'id Ramadan al uh, who was, uh, who was uh, he, he died uh, a few years back. But uh, I've, uh, he came to Malaysia, to the National University of Malaysia, UKM, to deliver uh, uh, some talks. But uh, he's also known for having uh, given commentaries on uh, the books of uh, Imam uh, Sheikh uh, Ibn Atta'illah. So that's a little bit about uh, the author of this book, uh, Tajul Arus. Mm -hmm. And obviously, um, uh, uh, the author Ibn Atta'illah al Iskandari is a great person where uh, he helped in people understanding, began understanding better uh, about Tasawuf. So maybe perhaps it reflects uh, in this book. So for the next question of the interview, um, what is the book is all about? What is the main theme or subject matter? And what is the structure of its presentation? Yeah. Uh, so, Tajul Arus Al Hawi Li Tahzib Al Nufus. We can translate, as I've uh, mentioned before, the bridegroom's crown containing instructions on refining the self. This mm. book is a work on uh, spiritual education. Uh, and it is a manual to cultivate a proper relationship uh, with God, uh, not merely intellectually or theologically, but experientially and psychodynamically. And uh, now we have to understand also that uh, the milieu, uh, how the book came about, in what, how was the condition uh, during that time, as I've said and described before, that was the time when people had begun to look and uh, at tasawuf in a, in a negative light there mm -hmm. even as uh, uh as i mentioned al bul abar al mursi he had spanish origins and that's the time that um you mentioned earlier uh, batisha that uh, last week we we talked about kitab al ilm from ihya ulumuddin imam al ghazali yes. so so the the time gap that uh, is given uh, about uh, 200 years have since passed and mm -hmm. uh well naturally you know people have gone uh, so advanced in, in, in their knowledge. Uh, and then uh, there were others who also uh, misunderstood some of the subtle sciences because you know when the, the science has matured and then uh, people who are just uh, coming in without referring to the proper teachers, proper scholars, and then these things are bound to happen uh, mm. when they just pick up a book and then they read into without the proper uh uh, preparation so they delve into uh, advanced highly advanced uh, texts texts such as uh, you know uh, books such as uh, those written by uh, the Sufi uh, master uh, Ibn Arabi uh, for example without having a proper training you know without having a teacher they easily misunderstand like that's what's happening uh, even today even in the west they're claiming that they, they have you know ibn arabi society or not so it's easy to confuse for them because uh, uh because some of the things uh, said on this advanced text 
they are spoken in allegories they are highly metaphysical and mm -hmm. uh, uh people who have no training they have no uh education sometimes they take this and they mean uh, and and put it upon themselves uh to interpret it and uh, it's easy to say that you know some some <clears throat> some of the sayings uh talk about uh, spiritual lights and some people have misconstrued this to mean the universality of uh, religions. Uh, this is what uh, we call uh, the transcendental unity of uh, religion, uh, which is to say that all religions come uh, from God. Therefore, all are equally uh, valid. So they mix and match whatever they like. They are not Muslims, but uh, they confuse the message of Islam, the higher message of Islam to mean to apply to them uh, without going through the the proper I mean uh, the proper uh, levels I mean there's a there's a famous hadith talking about uh, the prophet uh, conversing with uh, the angel uh, uh, Jibra'il then the Jib Jibra'il uh, uh, they talked about the three things uh, what is Islam what is uh, Iman and what is Ihsan and then mm -hmm. the, that's how we got to know the five pillars of Islam, the six pillars of uh, Iman. And Ihsan is worshipping uh, God, meaning carrying out uh, the ordinances of Islam and also believing in the six pillars of Iman. But practicing those and inculcating those in oneself in, until one... Uh, worship until one as if one sees God uh, and if he does not uh, he does not see God then he must know that God indeed sees him therefore you have this complete awareness uh, that uh, God sees whatever that we do and then when we worship or when we do something for the sake of Allah as if we see him therefore we are going to do it earnestly and carefully mm -hmm. and uh, following all the rules and uh, doing to the best of our ability. We are not going to uh, do it out of ignorance. We are not doing it lazily. We are not doing it without observing the proper rules, the proper uh, uh, the, the proper uh, shurut or the proper prerequisites to it. Meaning, uh, if you want to pray to God, then you have to observe the proper adab. Uh, you have to take uh, wudu, make ablution, make sure you're, that you are yourself is clean. And then uh, you face the qibla, and then you proper the you follow the proper motions uh, of, of prayer, the iqtidal, the takbir, the iqtidal, the fatiha, and then uh, the uh, the bowing, and then the prostrations. Mm -hmm. You follow this, and then you do it in such a way that everything is followed, and then you. And then the prayer is also observed from within the heart, meaning you empty yourself uh, from uh, thinking about others and concentrating upon your communication uh, with God. But <clears throat> those who are confused, they think that uh, whatever uh, spiritual experiences that they had uh, enables them to reach God without have, uh, having gone through this proper uh, worship, uh, proper rules. So mm -hmm. then, therefore, it is easy for them to confuse any lights that they see uh, to to mean the kind of illumination that one will receive if one follows uh, the path. Meaning, they are trying to circumvent, uh, short, uh, sort of, sort of making a shortcut. Uh, mm -hmm. Other people they struggle all their lives. Uh, to worship God and mm -hmm. then uh, by mercy of God they are granted illumination and then you have this sort of tranquility peacefulness inside you uh, but these people they are mistaken they never go through that sort of uh, training the hardship uh, but they think that they are illuminated and and because mm -hmm. of that they say things like they they don't they don't have to pray mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, it's, it's it's a kind of uh, the philosophy that the Greeks have that uh, enough it is only sufficient for them to 
contemplate upon the higher realities and thus they will be enlightened they will be illuminated we do without doing all the hard works uh, so this is sometimes this is the thing that uh, uh, in our uh, previous episode i have alluded to uh, people who do something what uh, imam ghazali said that al uh, ilm bila amal majnun wal ilm uh, wal amal bila ilm lam yakun a uh, person who have knowledge but no action is uh, is insanity but uh, the person who uh, does something without knowledge it, it does not become uh, anything they are just deluding uh, themselves so um so back to our book uh, tajul arus uh, there was a time when people have uh, become uh, confused and i have said it 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 has um it has cast a negative light upon tasawuf people are starting to think that uh, tasawuf is that type of thinking that you gain illumination without all the hard work that can that can uh, confer upon you uh, the spiritual enlightenment and even in uh, spain uh, you know the 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 leader the amir uh, yusuf tashfin Uh, he thought that uh, it is uh, Imam Ghazali's Ihya Ulumuddin that is uh, making people uh, confuse this thing. So he, he ordered a public burning of uh, Ihya Ulumuddin. Mm. Uh, so it, it's got to that extent. Uh, but this book is a more of a practical type of book rather than uh, th- theory. And we shall discuss into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is written in the cl- classical style of uh, spiritual aphorisms, hikmah or hikam, and uh, it's it's got like 345 wise sayings to be exact. So, so the structure is like that. But we can recognize uh, some of the major themes there, and mm-hmm. uh, this book is a treasure trove of uh, classical Islamic uh, spiritual wisdom. And it is free for from all the usual barriers between Sufism and the common believer. What does it mean? Is that uh, it doesn't drag the the common people into the discussion on higher metaphysical realities, but rather it introduces the uh, tasawuf, and it appeals to whatever that they they have in mind. But it shows into them the what is the practical thing to do uh to get to get there to mm-hmm. get to uh i- illumination and uh in this book uh, imam uh ibn atailah he uh he tries to circumvent the controversies and misunderstandings concerning uh, sufism uh in order to explain islam's tradition of Uh, devotional rectitude, uh, spiritual refinement, and purif- purification of the self to the everyday uh, Muslim. Why is it that? Why why do we pray? Why do we perform uh, saum? Uh, why do we fast? Why do we perform zakat? Is ultimately all these things is to realize uh, our faith in God, mm-hmm. and uh, he talks about how to begin okay assume that you are the uh, practicing uh, muslims but you want to learn more because in the quran it says that um uh god says that uh wama khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun he says that uh, god He uh, did not create men and jinn, but to worship him. Uh, so that is the sole purpose our, of our creation. Uh, that tells us that we come from God. And our mission here, life is about worshiping God in in the manner that is prescribed in uh, the Sharia, and unto him that we will return upon death. Mm-hmm. So, um, but Ibn al-Abbas, Uh, he said that uh, to worship Allah is to know Him, 
Because otherwise, there will be no point in worshipping something that we don't know. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so the, the religion is supposed to make us know God. And uh, so once we have known him, then we know that what he requires uh, of us. So uh, this book is helping uh, the practicing uh, Muslim achieve that. And how to achieve that? Uh, well, you have the recognition already. You know uh, that God exists and then you perform uh, the duties. But there are things which prevent you from achieving the higher uh, illumination. And this book is about uh, how to how to get there as i've said before so in the in the in the beginning sheikh nataillah talks about the proper way of uh, getting there is through first uh, repenting and mm -hmm. and this is uh, uh, repenting comes together with a show of uh, gratitude and censure of one's own uh, slackness because uh, when, you, when you repent, then you recognize that God is the one who is actually giving you the opportunity to worship him. Because other people, they don't know God. They don't want to worship God. They don't know what they're losing. And they don't know their own uh, slackness. Therefore, they begin <clears throat> to you know, uh, question things like, why is uh, evil things happening to good people, for example? Mm -hmm. They don't know that these things are trials and tribulations from God meant to cleanse them and it is rewarded in the hereafter because life is not just in this world but also in the hereafter. So that mm -hmm. is a kind of theodicy that Islam uh, is offering that God is in control of everything. Even ev evil and or trial or sickness that uh, befall us, that is from God meant to draw us closer to him, to put total reliance to Allah to make us uh, to make us totally rely upon him and uh, ultimately know him and uh, it is a reminder that uh, every action is counted and there is a dire consequence to disobedience mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then uh, Shaykh Nautaila talks about uh, the, val the virtues of uh, repentance by repenting, one remove the dire consequences. Repenting meaning you show attitude, uh, the proper gratitude and you censure yourself as uh, being slack, being lazy. But, <clears throat> but in doing that, you also rectify your, uh, these things. You rectify uh, ingratitude, you rectify uh, slackness, and rectify uh, uh, one's own uh, ignorance. And this appeals to the human uh, psychology in the tri religious tradition. One that uh, Imam Ghazali, in many of his works, uh, uh, he talks about it, that man has dual nature and obedience itself is a gift from God, while disobedience and slackness comes from our other nature, the animal uh, nature that does not want to uh, obey the higher order but wants to obey its own uh, baser instinct. So therefore, from here, we, uh, Shaykh Nauta Illah uh, says that blameworthy qualities are the, the barriers to God's mercy. Therefore, the proper way, the practical way of to get uh, God's mercy is to remove these uh, blameworthy quality, qualities, qualities such as ignorance. That is uh, when the intellect is devoid of uh, knowledge, of arrogance when uh, someone rejects the truth. And then next, he, he talks about the rules of scholars and sages and uh, to, to respect them because uh, these scholars, the religious scholars, they teach the knowledge of how to uh, gain uh, access to God. And, and he uses uh, metaphors here, like uh, the boy who uh, wanted, to do, wanted to, to learn how to swim, for example. Therefore, he goes to the swimming instructor. The, swim, the, the instructor teach him how to swim until such a time that uh, he is confident that the boy 
now possess the uh, the ability to swim, the skill to navigate the waters. Therefore, he, then he leaves the the student to fend for himself. So that is the like it, that is the 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 role of the teacher who teaches him uh, how to perform the ibadah, perform worship, the rules, and then uh, guides him along the way until such time when the teacher is no more there, then the students, uh, the student is able to fend for himself. Then he knows what is what is right and wrong, how to do uh, worship properly until he himself uh, receives uh, illumination. And so this brings to what uh, Sheikh Ibn Ta'illah says about uh, uh, self-awareness, uh, self that a person has uh, deficiencies and when he or she suffers hardships in life, these things will manifest. But a person who has self-awareness has total reliance upon God and belief in uh, uh, his provisions. Therefore, such a per person will no longer have doubt about, about uh, God's provisions. Meaning, uh, and these people, uh, they believe uh, totally in in God, and they uh, they are uh, they have the right mindset or the right opinion uh, about God. And um, and then uh, Shaykh Ibn Taylor talking talks about uh, some of the other ways, and there are many. It's like I said, there are about uh, three hundred and forty-five. So these are meant for the people who people who are. Uh, it, it, so it is not necessarily uh, that we have to obtain uh, spiritual illumination to be saved in the hereafter, you know, because uh, Islam recognizes that people comes in, you know, all forms and sizes and then they have different uh, levels. Not many of us can achieve that, but we still, you know, upon death, we still want to when we want to know that we'll be heading to a good place uh, nobody yeah. wants to know that uh we want to go we'll end up going to hell for example yes. or not knowing where we are headed uh, mm -hmm. but for the common people well uh there are those who god gift them with uh, intellect uh, but there are others who are uh, not so well blessed but they are diligent they are uh, hardworking and they want to secure salvation in the hereafter. So these uh, 345 aphorisms, if they follow uh, these steps, so it makes them e easier for them uh, to, to achieve that. So, mm -hmm. and, and one of them is like uh, severing ties with people to achieve intimacy with God. But this does not mean that one uh, isolated isolate or become uh, socially awkward or, or uh, what you call misanthrope. But uh, it, is, uh, it is not having total reliance upon people or hoping anything uh, from them. Uh, there's, a, there's a hadith that talks about min khairil islam al mar'a min khairil islam al mar'i meaning it is from the goodness of a person's Islam that he leaves that which does not concern him. And nowadays we see people are always, you know, getting busy about things which does not concern him. Uh, for example, gossips, you know, the people, yes. the, the, the lives of artists and celebrities, who gives birth to how many children, who... Mm -hmm is uh, getting divorced who is getting married but these things people busy themselves you know every day consuming you know the the media but it does not add anything to themselves it does not make them uh, better uh, persons <laughs> it makes them just informed but it does not give them the things which they need to perform in order to ha achieve happiness in this life uh, and the next so mm -hmm. severing ties with people is about that uh, not getting involved in things which does not uh, concern us. 
Right. So that's a that's a there's a lot that we can say about uh, this book, and it is uh, if we think that uh, kitab al ilm is uh, only uh, for people, yeah, you need somebody who teach who teach here uh, to in, in a proper manner. You know, for tajul arus is uh, mostly for the common but practicing. Uh, Muslim, so so that's uh that's the short that we can talk about uh, uh about this book. Mm-hmm. And uh, just now you mentioned that this book consists of three hundred and forty-five wise sayings, and it is suitable uh, for common uh, practicing Muslim just like us. And as we are reaching uh, the end of this interview, why is it relevant uh, today, especially in the modern times? Yeah. Um, so now we are looking at, you know, uh, you know, if we we talk about uh, what's in the scene now, there's a there's a there's a scene where people are seek healing because of uh, every day's uh, problems, uh, tensions with uh, their partners, with their coworkers, you know, toxic environment. So this the the modern uh, life uh, exerts these pressures uh, upon us. And um, and and from the way that uh, modernity it, it it gives rise to uh, social problems, and we can trace mm-hmm. back if we work backwards, and then we can see that these problems are caused by the rise of mental illnesses and disorders, and you know, crimes on the streets, uh, disharmony, and mm-hmm. uh, something which we call. Uh, cognitive dissonance that uh, sometimes people uh, talk theoretical knowledge but they ne- themselves uh, never practice it. So it's a kind of uh, dualism that we see uh, uh, people um, we see there are people who lead such uh, uh, cognitively dissonant uh, lives meaning they often preach something which uh, they do not themselves uh, practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can see some of them, they might be uh, people who are good citizens, uh, but they are person, they are leading such a, you know, uh, bad personal lives. Mm-hmm. You know, you can have, you know, uh, you, on, the, on the surface uh, level, you can have people who are good citizens, uh, they are uh, intelligent people, if efficient uh, employee, diligent accountant, skilled doctors, uh, learned professors, and astute leaders. But on the social side, which uh, which uh, which may affect or what I just said before, this may look good only on the reports on papers. But on the other side, they might be leading, you know, lives as as as, as a bad person that we don't know, uh, a rebellious child, uh, you mm-hmm. know, uh, a nasty friend, uh, a sexual predator, a cowardly uh, spouse, a responsible, irresponsible uh, neighbor, or an abusive uh, parent. Meaning, the system uh, produces only good citizens. In so far as efficiency is concerned, they are mm. making money, they are contributing to taxes, but they have social costs, as I've said before. Uh, these costs are mental illnesses, uh, disharmony, you know, uh, high crime rates. Mm. And then on top of that, you have actually uh, you have an underlying uh, issue, uh, the issue that which I have said. Uh, the rise in in what we call as uh, 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 what if we can uh, we can what is called as sad s a d stress okay. anxiety and uh, depression uh-huh. so so these problems do not stop at the social level because it will impact on the other. Uh, dimensions as well in the economics uh, dimension 
in the politics uh, dimensions. And these are all symptoms of, of uh, failing to govern uh, oneself. It is ultimately uh, rooted at that because if you ask if we ask ourselves how can if we don't know how to manage ourselves if we don't know how to govern our bad impulses then how is it are we going how is it that we are going to govern others uh, mm -hmm. so this is the root of the problem when we see you know politicians they are lying they are when they take uh, when some people you know neigh bad neighbors for example they take the land of others or even uh, thieves, we have theft, for example. They are always taking because these they don't realize that of uh, they don't realize the dual nature of man. They think that you thrive only by through growth, through gaining, through acquisition of wealth, through having lots of of money, but you neglect on the spiritual side of it, and this does not make a good case for civilization for a city uh, a mm -hmm. village will crumble a city will cease to function and the civilization will disintegrate because of this so ultimately the cause is at the failure of governing the self so back to the question why this this particular or this kind of work is relevant to us today is because we need to train or to educate ourselves and to train the self uh, in a proper uh, manner to achieve uh, illumination. If, in, if we, did not, we do not achieve even that, and then at least the type of education that this kind of work offers is uh, to produce uh, a good man. So mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, pretty much what I want to conclude today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like that sharing because as currently in the social media era, it's very easy for us uh, to see uh, on the internet uh, people sharing, giving tips, yeah. uh, giving advice on, for example, like how to have a proper marriage, how to have a blissful ma marriage, but they themselves having problem with their marriage. Yeah. And it gives a, a good reflection to us that whenever we try to seek for advice uh, on something, it should be that we look not just um, about the advice itself but also on the person himself about the personality yeah. uh, about the moral as being uh, highlighted by our religion and with that being said I would like to thank uh, Dr. Husni for his insight on today's sharing uh, Tejul Arus Ibn Ataila Al Iskandaris introduction to Tasawuf and uh, we hope that today's sharing uh, will be beneficial to those who are listening to us either through radio or even through our social media Facebook and YouTube. And again, Doctor, thank you for yeah. being with us. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And dear listeners, if you miss any part of the show, you can watch it again through our Facebook page and also through our YouTube Iki Media. And we'll be back next week with more interesting topic from Dr. Husni. So stay tuned to Iki, my fam. 103.5.